Hey YouTube, it's Matt with Lips Reptiles, and today we are going to update you with a clutch that just hatched. We actually had to do an outtake, because I said just shed, then realized that I forgot a piece of information that y'all are going to want to know. So I had to kind of go back to the drawing board. But hey, we're here. We're ready to do it. Uh, it's going to be really awesome. And then we're going to go to Patreon, talk about what we're going to do with these. And Patreon, I'm going to share an update with you guys about something going on in my world outside of reptiles that I personally find super exciting. Some of you already know it's kind of been coming and talked about, but I just got notification today that's a big, big deal for me. I can't wait to share it with y'all over there. But let's get to some snakes, right? So we are going to be talking about clutch number, I believe it's 14. Um, it is 14, see, it's my memory. And we had five eggs. Let's see if we got five healthy babies. We're gonna count them as we do it. Uh, what was this clutch? We already did some rinsing earlier, so you're going to have a little bit of gold flake in there. Promise we're not rinsing in gold schlager for you old people that remember what gold schlager is. <laughs> uh, hey, that made Question Girl laugh a little bit. Look at that. I'm Real still, flex of gold. I'm still a little funny every now and then, y'all. Uh, so this pairing was what I was super excited about. So we're going to see if we got anything that we're really going to be yay on. We had a pastel calico blitz head SK Xantic. Born and raised in house. Uh, and we bred it to two females this year. One of them did lay eggs for us. Uh, and that was a pastel exantic. It's also this is possibly yellow belly, but we've never proved the yellow belly. So we're just going to call it a pastel exantic. Uh, here's the thing I've been wanting to get blitz into exantic for a very long time. And uh, we had to start, you know, raise up the all the things, right? And we were really excited to get that going this year. Uh, he's not been the best breeder for us, to be blunt. Uh, and for whatever reason, he is one snake we did actually lose this year. When you have a collection of size, you are going to lose some from time to time. It's going to happen. It's, uh, I'll be blunt, man. Some are more sad than others, right? And that one was, was sad. He was never a very big snake, you know, but he was eating good, doing fine. Uh, he did take off a little bit of time breeding to, to get back on food, but it been eating and been doing great. And just one day, it was just it so uh most likely something internally going on there but uh very very kind of a sad thing so i was really worried that i'm gonna have to start this project all over now you guys are gonna get to find out with me if we're gonna have to start this all over because that was the only thing with blitz and exantic in it that we had and yeah i could go buy something somewhere if i needed to right but here's the thing I'm a very firm believer that if I go buy something somewhere, chance of it being the quality of the line of Blitz that I have, when we say Blitz, Hurricane, or Trick, whichever one, are pretty low. You know, um, what we have been able to hold back and produce, starting with really, really high-end animals uh, really early in that game, has been phenomenal versions of Blitz, and you will see a little bit of that. And so... I'm hoping to get that in there. Now, everything would be, at minimum, head exantic, right? So we use a visual exantic female. So even if we just have a blitz, we're not completely out the game. But boy, wouldn't it be awesome to get that visual. I mean, that's really what we're after. So uh, without further ado, well, also, too, the last female, I guess I should say, he bred, I was a retained sperm clutch, and he wasn't the father. So we got to figure out if he's actually the dad too, which would take a visual exantic would prove that in this case, or anything with blitz. So... Let's get started, and we'll pull out the first snake. It's time to one I grabbed. I'm going to give it a little dunk here, a little rinse off, <laughs> a little spa bath. If you're going to do this, this water should almost feel slightly cool to the touch or the same temperature at hand. Remember, you're 98.6 degrees. If that water's warm, it is too hot for these guys. It should be what they call tepid, uh, which is, feels like almost nothing temperature-wise. So this one here is not anything exciting, right? That is a pastel, 100% head exantic. This is not what we're really trying to get out of this clutch, but sometimes it's what you got. We'll see if it gets any better. Well, I feel like it's a baptism. Yeah. So this one here is a blitz, and you can really see it in that pattern. This is what I'm talking about. What our blitz looks like versus some other things that people say are blitz uh, is different, right? I don't want to bring in a bad example into this project. This project's near and dear to my heart. It ain't about the money. I can give a shit less about the money. That's right, you heard me say it. I don't give a rat's ass about the money. I ain't gonna get rich doing this. Can I make a profit? Sure, do we? Sure, have we? Yeah. But is this really like just money grubbing as quick as we can? No, we all saw people do that through COVID and it really ruined the market. Um, and I'm okay with that. But this is a really nice example of Blitz. Why do I say it's so nice? You have such a busy pattern, really blown out keyholes, lots of donuts going on there. You know, like just... 
I mean, you look at this and it just looks different. You know, and some of those tricks and blitzes and hurricanes out there are kind of eh, you know. I know people are trying to say the maybe the hurricane line's nice. The rest of people just trying to protect profit. Nice examples are nice examples. Full stop. Doesn't matter the line. Doesn't matter if it's blitz. Doesn't matter if it's trick. Doesn't matter if it's hurricane. And guys, that's not me trying to generate profit because a blitz was selling for more than trick by a lot. And hurricane was selling for more than that because some dick wada in Germany keeps wanting to say it's different. It's not. Don't believe anybody who's trying to tell you something's different and then trying to ask three times as much for it. Come on, man. There's motivation there, right? They're motivated by money. Uh, so, which is their prerogative. But this is what we're talking about. This isn't even the nicest one we produce. It's one of the nice. It's nice, but I made much nicer even single jeans. You also hear people say supers can't exist in Blitz. Uh, that's a bunch of crap. I can pull one out and show it to you sometime. And it looks as nice or nicer than the Hurricane Super you'll ever see. So let's go on the next one. We've got a visual example here. <laughs> this helps prove the dad is who we want because this one is an exanthic calico. You can see the white already starting. You can see that elongated tail pattern. That's a hallmark. I don't see pastel in this at all. So you haven't been sexing these as you've been putting them in? And... Yeah, I know. Okay. I didn't know if you were going to... This is a question girl question. Like, yeah. Sometimes you sex them? Sometimes I do. Sometimes I don't. Okay. Here's the, if we sex them now, i got to resex them all anyway. Because okay. they're going to go in here until they shed and we'll have to sex them when we set them up. So I'm just not putting them through that stress at the moment. There may be one or two we do that with. But not, not this one. So we'll put this one right okay. in here. Nice, uh, nice calico exanthic. Pretty, pretty awesome. Uh, we will pull this guy out here. And this is a combo snake right here. This is a pastel blitz. And you can see when you compare it, it's going to be just... The blitz makes those blacks really, really nice, right? And that pastel brings out more color. Then you get all that crazy pattern. They just look really, really nice. The pattern doesn't blow out as much when you add pastel, but it's still pretty blown out. You get a lot of the donuts, a lot of really, really heavy pattern. You can see some of the twisting going on there, there. I mean, it's pretty clear, right? Um, so it's, it's kind of clear throughout. Pretty awesome snake. And you can set it right there to compare to that regular blitz where you can really see the color. So if you're keeping math, we had five eggs. That's one, two, three, four babies. And no, uh, only one visual exantic, right? Two blitzes. I mean, you know, and look at the difference between pastel blitz, not pastel blitz. So don't get fooled because sometimes that pastel pattern can be a little bit bigger eyelets, but when you put them side by side, it should be night and day. <coughs> but only four babies because we do have a fifth. We did hit 100% hatch rate here. So we plot number five. Of course, if you were on Patreon, you probably already knew about this because I sent a picture of it while it was still in the egg before it crawled out. And this here, guys. Is that a paradox on it? Because you had like an orange spot or something over there. Well, shit, it is actually. Look at me. I hadn't even noticed that. That's This snake just got cooler. Uh, so this is a blitz exanthic paradox. And it's not just that orange spot. It bleeds all the way down in. It's a little color through there. Look at that. How cool is that? So uh, definitely a little bit of paradox. It's a little... little bling of color. You can see it's going to match the color of that. I do not think a pastel is in this. You get a little bit of head blushing, but not enough for me to go, oh, pastel's there. So this is what I think is just a Blitz uh, Exantic. And I shouldn't say just, because that's pretty badass, right? So this is one we do want to sex, just to kind of see. Because that replaces the one that passed, correct? It's a boy. Usually, I would be like, damn it. In this case, I'm actually excited it's a boy. Uh, yeah, I wanted it to be a male. We don't keep back very many males. This is a male that I'll just go ahead and tell you we'll be holding back. Um, it's awesome, man. It's what we wanted, and now I can get Blitz into Exantic a lot easier. We can run this through like some of our Super Pastel stuff and things like that with Exantic. It just really makes some neat, neat things. Um, there is a Firefly head Exantic, you know, I, I'm thinking of right now that this is going to be perfect for down the road. So this is going to be a new breeder male for us. Look at that thing. Billy freaking bad ass right there. All right. So question girl, any questions? Um, since it has a paradox, is that a genetic that you need to possibly look for when you're breeding since it is a male? Uh, no. So paradox in ball pythons. Uh, I want to say it's Kenyan sand boas that do have a, a line of reproducible paradox, but I believe there's also paradox 
That's not reproducible there. There is, but there is genetic paradoxin, and I think it's Kenyan sand boas. I don't breed Kenyan sand boas, so if I'm wrong, don't murder me in the comments. Or do, I don't really give a rat's butt. But, uh, see, I said Bob, I'm trying to clean up my language. Look at that, guys. I'm doing my best here. But no, in ball pythons, paradoxin is just paradoxin. It is not going to be genetic. It's just going to make it cool. Sometimes you'll see a, a face that's split in two, and that usually is a sign of um, an absorbed twin and some of that DNA popping through. This obviously could be that as well, but um, it's most likely just a paradox. Usually when you have that chimera, as they call it, you're going to have a lot more of it, and bifurcated face is pretty common, but there's really no way to know for sure unless you started testing DNA. An individual, I'm not talking about sending a shed test here, okay? You'd have to have big enough pieces and send two separate shed tests from the same snake in two separate sections, so only those sections get tested to prove that they're genetically different. But if you were to take and run a DNA sample on a chimera, you're going to get two different DNA strands in that animal. It, it is, and it happens in humans. There's a pretty famous story out there of a, of a female, mind you, who uh, was denied government assistance because they somehow tested, I don't know why they had to test the baby, but the baby did not test as hers. Her DNA and the baby's DNA did not test the same. She's bringing hospital records, proving she gave birth to this baby, and all of this stuff, and they're still like, nope. And so they had to test her DNA in other locations and found that she, in fact, was a chimera. And that baby was, in fact, from her. It just, if you tested the DNA from her saliva glands, like a spit test, it was not going to test as that. So, uh, it does exist in people as well. It's a really kind of cool science. It's one of those times when DNA can be a little fluky. So if you happen to find that you're a chimera, I do say, like, if your saliva tests are different than your... Uh, Finger DNA or oil from your skins. Go commit crimes, man. They'll never know it's you, right? I mean, that's like a free reign. Just go leave your DNA everywhere. I mean, that's the best way to do it. They'll blame somebody who doesn't exist. It's freaking awesome. Uh, yeah, high five for that. It's not what she was trying to do. But no, that's the should have had a V8 pop. <laughs> I mean, I'm just thinking out loud here. All right. Any other questions here? Yes. So Even your after I did that. one who you're considering keeping, Not considering, the one keeping. you are keeping, um, about how long are you going to have to wait in order to breed that buddy? Is it you got to wait for wet dreams to start appearing? Like what? Whoa, don't you, you ever get on to me and then you bring that, a wet dream joke into this. Whoa, whoa. At yeah. what point are you like, this is a breedable male? So we're going to look for that male to be at least a year old. So I, I would anticipate that coming breeding season, he ain't going to be breeding, okay? The following, so if we start breeding, say, in November this year, uh, he's not going to happen. The following November, he's got a possibility of happening. He needs to get to that year mark, and he needs to be about 600 grams. He's a good-sized baby. If he starts well and eats well, and we're, we concentrate on that, you know, we're selective with his feeding and making sure it's appropriate size. He has a shot to get there that quick, but we're not going to rush him. He, uh, a lot of males, you know, can take two years. Rushing them only is going to you be done. For, for monetary purposes. So we won't rush him. If he's ready in a year, awesome. If he takes two, shit, man, I've waited this long. I can wait longer. It ain't no big thing, you know. So I'm healthy and not going to die anytime soon, I don't think. Anything else? No, that's it. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time.